Facebook page. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tweet it out on my page, too. I'll just retweet it. Hello, Twitchies. How are you doing Hi. this evening? Uh, Excited to talk some Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. Nerd Cave Retro. That's what I'm looking up. Yeah, one of those shows. The 50 shows that I do. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. I used to do like five shows in a week. <laughs> oh, I know. I used to do three a week. I'm like, oh, I couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> no. No, no two, not two is paid. perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If I was getting paid, that'd be nice, but, you know. Oh, if I got paid, I'd do five shows for sure. I'd be five shows a day if I got paid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if you're five ready to go. talking Super Smash Brothers. If you're ready to go, I'll go ahead and start us off. <clears throat> sure, I'll, I'll, keep, uh, I'll keep posting. Okay. Well, here we go. In three, two, one. This episode of the Nerd Cave Retro is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash nerdcave. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. You're listening to the Nerd Cave Network. Greetings, programs, and we're back here again for another episode of the Nerd Cave Retro Show. My name is Jason Robbins. And I'm Derek Diamond. So how was your week, Mr. Derek? Well, it was uh, a little bit of a letdown because I had to come back from Los Angeles, mm. which was which was very disappointing. But um, I know you had trip fun because itself- the, the pictures look nice. Well, so for those who watched and listened last week, uh, well, we did two episodes uh, back to back two weeks ago because last week I was in L.A. Uh, Stayed out there for roughly about three days, got in Thursday night, left Monday morning, got back here uh, Monday night around 6.30, 7 ish in the evening. And I'll be perfectly honest. It was top three trip I've ever been on. Oh, I wish sure. I was still out there. Uh, I wish I could go to. <clears throat> Lucky you. It, it was. We did a lot of stuff in three days, and I still feel like we didn't really do that much because <laughs> there's just so much to do out there. You know, we did the Warner Brothers Studio tour, which See, was amazing. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't do a Hollywood Babylon while you were out there. Uh, the tickets were sold out. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they sell out well in advance. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we looked like in advance, and they were already sold out. Cool. So we're just like, well, that we can gives us an excuse to go back again. Yeah. But maybe we can you go know, out did the there Warner Brothers Studio tour. Um, say again. Oh, I said maybe one day we can go out there together. That'd be awesome. No, absolutely. That'd be great. Uh, we did that. Um, ate a lot of food it, it was okay. funny because as soon as we landed and we got our rental car i looked at sarah and i said i know it's late but i've got to try in and out burger <laughs> how was it oh delicious oh. as as far as like fast food burgers go i would probably put it number one wow really it, it was it was that good hmm. i might have to break my no meat rule for that uh, it's it's worth it, but there's just so much that we did. You know, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We did, of course, a Hollywood tour. We saw the Chinese Theater, the Dolby Theater, where they host the Oscars. Just so many cool and fun places, and I, I can't wait to go back. I mean, I'm even thinking about you know just saving up and maybe going back again, like during Christmas break or early next year. That'd like cool. that's that's how much fun I had, and I'd love to spend like a full week out there. You know, if yeah. I could afford it to just have more time to do to do stuff. Yeah, same. It was here. awesome. We're supposed to be going to Las Vegas next February, and mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be fun. I, I've never been to the desert. <laughs> I I can't wait to go. We're going to do the Hoover Dam, and uh, 
I know the the Grand Canyon's a few hours away, but I think we might rent a car and go see the Grand Canyon. Uh, we're going to be out there for probably a week, so I think we'll get we'll have plenty of time to do whatever we want to do while we're there. I'd love to go to L.A. That's like one of my top five places I want to go. Um, hopefully, mm-hmm. uh, if when I go to Jersey in April, hopefully I'll get to make a stop in New York, if possible. If not, it's not going to break my heart, but I'd love to go to New York, too. Yeah, same here. It's funny because uh, a friend of mine who I work with was in New York at the same time I was in L.A. Mm. So we were, you know, comparing, you know, trip notes and whatnot. And I I remember I would want to send people stuff at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. But I'm like, wait, it's two o'clock in the morning back home. So (laughs) probably shouldn't do that. But yeah, but but no, it was it was great. That's It, it was really, really fun. Well, lucky you. Um, I thought I broke my toe earlier this morning. I saw your tweet. <laughs> what, what happened with that? I was helping a friend of mine move and, um, we had loaded a, the, the U-Haul, like packed it to the gills. And, um, one of the, his other friends showed up kind of late and, um, he had a truck and we were just about to leave. And he was like, no, let's throw a lot of more stuff in the back of my truck. That way we can kind of use, utilize our space. Like, okay, so we started putting more uh, shelves in his truck and different things like that. And I went in to grab some shelves, and I didn't realize that the shelf was in two parts. I thought it was just one big shelf, and I went to, to move it away from the wall. Well, the bottom part of the shelf fell and went right on the top of my foot. <laughs> and, uh, wow. I, I didn't think it was as bad as well because it basically just instantly went numb, <laughs> and then the pain hit, and then I took my shoe off and my sock was a bloody rag. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> awful. So I, I thought I broke it, and, and you know I kind of splinted it up a bit, and uh, came home and uh, popped some ibuprofen and uh, cleaned it up really good, and I'm probably going to lose my toenail in the next week or so. So that's going to be fun. I'll send you a picture when it happens. <laughs> oh, looking forward to it. Oh, I, sh- I wish I would have kept the sock to show it to you. You would have been horrified. Uh. Like I pulled my shoe off and it was just like, you know, I have worn white socks and it's just like the whole front of it, just like this red bloody mess. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if you had done that, you would have, the viewers would have seen me do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I spent most of the day, um, I got a free pass to, to lay in the chair and, uh, and play video games, which was fun because I, um, I got a game called steam world dig on the switch. It was, uh, on sale for five bucks on the, the eShop and I'm, uh, finished it today. Uh, roughly mm-hmm. it took me roughly about five hours to finish it. So if you're listening to this, go pick up. Uh, Steam World Dig on the Nintendo eShop for the Switch is really good. It's like a platformer mixed with Dig Dug, and it's highly addictive. And I couldn't stop playing it until I finished the game. And I'm like, oh, I'm done. I want to play more. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, that was my day. Awesome. And uh, hopefully, I'll be able to walk tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> Lucky hopefully me. so. Uh, But let's go ahead and move into the news right now. From Deadline.com, Street Fighter TV series based on video game franchise in works at E1. I don't know what E1 is. I've never heard of this. Uh, I don't even know if they're a network or what they are, but it says... uh, uh, Entertainment One, Mark Gordon, has de- has closed the deal to develop, produce, and finance a TV series adaptation of the popular Street Fighter global video game franchise with Joey Ansa, Jacqueline Quella, and Mark Wooding, the team behind the live-action web series Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, set to produce. Uh, the series will draw on the game's World Warrior story arc introduced in the 91 Street Fighter II The World Warrior sequel to the original game as the jumping off point, centering on four protagonists, Ryu, Ken, Guile, and Chun-Li. Together they fight to take down M. Bison, the evil mastermind who runs Shadaloo, a cl- global criminal 
organization. Um, this is kind of cool. I mean, if it, hopefully it'll be on something like uh, you know Netflix or something eventually, because I, I would watch it, but I, I'm not going to subscribe to E1 just to watch Street Fighter, the TV series. No, and I mean, we saw what happened with Castlevania, and I mean, I don't know what direction this series is going to go. I don't know if it's animated, if it's going to be live action. But I think, you know, if doing an anime style would be kind of cool. I mean, it worked yeah. for Castlevania, and I think it would be perfect for Street Fighter. I think that's same the same thing way with you. you. Really... I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to subscribe to a specific streaming service. Yeah. I mean, E1, and it says here at the beginning, Entertainment One, so that makes me assume that it's some type of production company. Yeah, I would think so. So maybe, so maybe it will be for like Netflix or even like a Hulu. Yeah. I would watch it for sure because the the more the more good video game adaptations like this, the better it is for all the other you know franchises as far as increasing their chances of getting a movie or a series. Yeah, and it it doesn't necessarily say in the article here if it's going to be live action or not, but the web series Street Fighter Assassin's Fist was uh, a 12-episode live action web series. So I think they could do it live action, but honestly, I, I would much rather see an anime, uh, you know, yeah. like like the, the Castlevania and stuff like that. So either one would be okay with me. I'd prefer anime, but yeah. At least we're getting something. Hopefully, uh, yeah. the, mo the more video game stuff they make, the better they're going to get at it. So, Yeah, I think so, too. Our next story comes from BleedingCool.com. This was actually a really cool story. Sega reveals the secret origin of Sonic the Hedgehog at GDC. Sega had always intended for their hedgehog mascot to appeal to Americans, but until today, we didn't know just what inspired the company to create the blue mammalian mm -hmm. speed enthusiast i'm sure i hopefully i got that right uh it turns out our favorite hedgehog has a pretty interesting secret origin that traces back to world war ii specifically to ww2 fighter pilot hedgehog the human so it wasn't the name of an actual fighter pilot but it was sonic's original backstory as created by the original sonic team uh, game designer and character designer revealed the character's true origin in a talk at the game developers conference this week in san francisco the human version of the iconic character had a very, very full backstory. He was a World War II fighter pilot with a penchant for speed and spiky hair that earned him the nickname Hedgehog. Later on, his wife writes a children's book inspired by his aerial exploits. Some of that backstory has carried through the version of the character we know today. The Sonic logo features stylized wings like those you'd see on the back of a pilot's bomber jacket, and the character's smile was based on the designs painted to the nosocones of WW2 fighter planes. You know, it's funny because I had always wondered what that background meant with the wings and the flags on the side. Like yeah. it, it looked very pilot esque, but it, it to me never really made sense as far as a blue hedgehog. Yeah, I never really thought about but, it until now. But now that I look at, it, I'm like, yeah, it is very, you know, uh, sort of 1940s fighter pilot kind of uh, insignia. Mm-hmm. And it goes on to say, the human version of Sonic was scrapped because the main gameplay mechanic involved rolling, which led to the team dropping Hedgehog the Human for a character who could roll like a cute dog or an old man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes me laugh. <laughs> I would have been very curious to see the old man version. Like, how, an old man's still a human, <laughs> right? <laughs> am, I, yeah. am I getting that wrong, or do old men turn into something uh, animalistic? <laughs> <laughs> I, you got me there. They also wanted something children could draw, so Oshima took his character designs, which were a hedgehog, a dog, and an old man, to New York Central Park to see which version children would like. And of course, they reacted most positively to the hedgehog. And as they say, the rest is history. Oh, uh, but the, uh, the 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 old mustachioed man came in second, and that old man with a mustache went on to become oh, yeah. Eggman. That's true. Yep, that's, a, that's awesome. Yeah, I honestly, I had never heard of that story until, you know, I read it earlier today when um, when you put the show notes up. It's really cool. It's that, that's actually, like, really, really fascinating to me. Yeah. I, but I love the design. I still say that Sonic is still one of the best-looking uh, video game characters, uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know, of that era, at least. 
too bad he didn't translate well to a 3D realm, but maybe now, you know, with the, the Sonic Legacy and all that, that, just keep Sonic in the 2D realm. You know, 2D games are, are making a huge comeback. And that's that's the world that Sonic needs to live in. He doesn't need to be like Mario. Doesn't need to be in, be in a 3D environment. Keep him in that 2D space from now on. Yeah, Don't change him. Because Sonic Mania was great. Yeah. You know, I have it for the Switch, and it's, it's that perfect blend of old style with you know just making the graphics a little bit brighter it's an hd obviously mm -hmm. but the gameplay is exactly the same as the original games and it was so much fun so i totally been... agree keep sonic in the yeah. 2d that's what everybody's wanted for 20 something years and nothing else has worked go back to what made him great yep uh before our last story of the evening this comes from polygon uh, the original Punch-Out! is coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, but, of course, there this is going to be in Japan on March 30th. No North American release has been announced, but they have reached out to Nintendo for the details. Uh, the original arcade version of Punch-Out! is coming to Nintendo Switch as part of the Arcade Archives line, according to a report from Impress Game Watch. Arcade Archives Punch-Out! will hit the Switch in Japan on March 30th. Um, and I don't know if you actually ever actually played the original Punch Out. The reason that um, that little Mac is so tiny is because when they had to port, when they ported it from the original, uh, you know, arcade. Uh, originally, you know, the, your fighter was just kind of a green, like see-through, uh, like a wire character. They couldn't mm -hmm. translate that to the NES, so they created Little Mac. And most of the, the fighters that you fight are the same, you know, like, uh, you know, Glass Joe and uh, uh, Piston Honda and all those guys are still the same, uh, except for I think originally Soda Popinski was actually uh, Vodka Drunkinski or something like that. They had to change him for the, the home version. Um, but this would actually be really fun to play uh, in the original arcade form. Um, I have played it a few times. It, it's really good, and I would still like to have an updated version of the Nintendo ver uh, version of Punch Out. I think that'd be really good to do. But um, if I had to guess, I would say they'll probably make a North American announcement, probably summer. I would say for maybe like a fall release or or holiday release. Uh, that's what that that would be my guess. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I, I've never played the original Punch Out, but you know, if it were to come out for the Switch, I would definitely consider getting it because it, it's really good. You know, and I, I'll play Punch Out any time of day, any day, because Punch Out is still one of the just greatest games ever made uh, for yeah. arcade, Nintendo, wherever you play it. It's just great. Um, yeah, for on sure. That, on that note, let's go ahead and move into this month in video game history. Uh, in March of 1988, RC Pro-Am, a racing video game, which I have reviewed right here on the show, uh, was developed by Rare and was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System by Nintendo for North America in March 1988 and then in Europe on April 15th of the same year. RC Pro-Am, still one of the top 10 greatest NES games of all time. Also featured in uh, our favorite retro gaming movie, The Wizard. Yes. <laughs> uh, Just for anything, a, a, brief, a brief little clip, but it is in there. If it was in The Wizard, it's royalty. <laughs> right? But no, it's, it's one of those games, you know, like you said, you've reviewed it in the past, and you know, I didn't know until you originally reviewed it that it was made by Rare, one of my you know, all-time favorite developers who yeah. I wish were still relevant to this day. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, March 21st, 1989, Sega releases Fantasy Star 2, a landmark title for the role-playing video game genre. Now, my I have very, very limited experience with Fantasy Star. There was a game, uh, I think it was called Fantasy Star Online for the GameCube, mm -hmm. That that me and a few friends played like for the first month or so after it came out, but it was one of those that I just could never really get into it. Yeah, it's it's very highly regarded with the RPG crowd, um, even though it wasn't you know RPGs and and you know JRPGs weren't that popular. 
until you know the the Super Nintendo came around and and really kind of brought them into the public consciousness. But people who like RPGs, especially the 16-bit era, really hold the Fantasy Star series in high regard. And I would like to actually check them out. Um, but you know, I don't have the time to really dig into RPGs like I used to. Um, only like mm-hmm. select ones that, you know, I really want to get into or something I've played before or something, you know, for the Super Nintendo, like the Chrono Trigger and things like that. Like the big ones that I, that I missed back in the day, but I, I would, yep. I would play one, you know, Fantasy Star just to kind of get a taste for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely consider it too. Uh, also, in March 26th of 1993, one of Derek's favorite games, uh, Star Fox, uh, was released for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, uh, co-developed by Argonaut Software and Nintendo EAD, and published by Nintendo. Yeah, it's uh, one of those franchises that I wish would make a strong comeback. You know, when this game came out, it it really pushed the SNES to its limits. Mm-hmm. Um, with 3D looking software, um, you know, it had a very polygonal, almost like a, almost like a computer model type look. But I just remember being blown away by it at the time, and you know, I I, I love these games. You know, I've I've enjoyed. I didn't play the one for the Wii U, but I've played all the other ones, and they're all so fun to me. And I, I wish that I know everyone's wanting Metroid, and it has been announced, but. If at E3 Nintendo announced a new Star Fox was in development, I would probably run through my house. See, the way you feel about Star Fox is the way I feel about this next franchise, or dead franchise for Nintendo, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in nineteen or March 1994, Nintendo releases Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2. It is the second-to-last first-party game released on the NES, with Wario Woods being the last. And the final game developed by Nintendo exclusively for the NES. How crazy is it that they were still making NES games in 1994? See, that's uh, that's what I really want to get into about this game. I'm going to do a review of this soon. I tried to play it again. I've tried to start playing it again a couple of times over the last few months. And I don't know what it is about Jota's Revenge. Everybody talks, you know, that likes the Star Tropics franchise. Everybody likes the second one, saying it's much better than the first game, but I had so much fun with the first game. I just, there's something missing from the second one. And I think it might just be, even though, you know, even though the, the controls are kind of a little more refined, I just feel like it's kind of more of the same. And this was so late in the, the NES life cycle, you know, like this is like eight years in at this point, and we're already three years into the super Nintendo like why they didn't take this franchise and make this game for the Super Nintendo is just mind-boggling to me. Because if you would have had that kind of upgrade from, you know, like the upgrade from the original Zelda to Link to the Past and you see like that jump um to to how much, you know, bigger and bolder Link to the Past was, but it was still kind of the same gameplay mm-hmm. is the first legend of zelda if they could have done that with star tropics i think star tropics would still be a franchise to this day but they just putting it on the nes was just kind of a mistake and there's really just dropping the ball on what they could have done with that franchise i just don't understand why they were still making nes games because what the snes came out in i think 91 yeah and that's a, uh, that's the thing is like you got a game like Star Tropics, which is sort of a, I mean it's basically an RPG. You know, it's a very large game. Um, but if you're gonna do RPGs, why are you making one for basically a dead system when all the people that are playing RPGs are playing them on the Super Nintendo? You know, because little kids, you know, little at this time it was little kids that were that still had the Nintendo and was still playing Nintendo. Older kids already had the Super Nintendo at this point. Adults had the Super Nintendo at this point. They were playing RPGs on the Super Nintendo. They weren't going to go back and play it on the NES. I just It's mind-boggling to me how they just dropped the ball on this franchise, man. It hurts my heart because I like Star Tropic <laughs> so much. Well, and you hit the nail on the head because there were so many great RPGs for the Super Nintendo, like... Earthbound, like yeah. Secret of Mana, Illusion of Gaia, Secret of Evermore. Star Tropics could have been 
associated with that list. Yeah, it would have fit right. For some in reason, with those. they just—I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, we get get Nintendo on the phone. Let me look up here on <laughs> Skype. Get some <laughs> get some Nintendo. Write a letter people. to Redmond, Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's gonna do it this week for this month in video game history. So, Derek, what you been reading? So, for you, the listeners of the Nerd Cave Retro Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free thirty day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, we do have a movie coming out this week that is mm-hmm. based off a very popular book. And that book would be called Ready Player One. Yes. Written by Ernest Klein. I think the movie comes out Thursday, but they're doing a Wednesday night premiere. Hopefully I'll be able to make it out to that. Um, that one I would recommend. I haven't quite finished it yet. Hopefully can finish it uh, by Wednesday. Uh, but they have all other kinds of books, too. They have fiction, nonfiction, sci-fi, mystery, romance, gaming. Uh, they have, for If you're a gaming fan, they have books from Halo, Gears of War, Mass Effect, World of Warcraft. Literally any genre you can think of, Audible has. And if you're always on the go like I am, Audible is a great service to have to be able to continue to read without having to sit down and read a physical copy. And to do that, just go to audibletrial.com slash nerdcave. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdcave for your free audiobook download and 30-day free trial. And this week we're talking about... I was trying to pick the most jauntiest music I could find from the uh, the game, <laughs> and uh, that was the one that stuck out the most to me. That was a very good one. I, I very much like the choice. So for this week, I'm going to be reviewing the original Super Smash Brothers game. Super Smash Brothers is a fighting video game developed by HAL Laboratory and published by Nintendo for the N64 home video game console. It was released in Japan in January of 1999 and in North America on April 26th, 1999. Uh, The game is a crossover between many different Nintendo franchises, including Mario, Zelda, Star Fox, Donkey Kong, Metroid, Mother, a.k.a. Earthbound, F-Zero, Yoshi, Kirby, and Pokemon. So, growing up in the 90s, being a huge Nintendo fan, and I'm sure you thought the same thing, too, what would happen if Mario and Link met each other in a video game? What yeah. if Link was thrown into the world of Star Fox? Or what if you know they were all thrown into the world of Pokemon, F-Zero, Metroid? And I remember this just like it was yesterday. I remember sitting uh, at my grandparents' house because they had like a little gaming room with a pool table, a jukebox, and had a little gaming center set up with, uh, with a TV. And I'm watching TV, and I see this commercial of these four people dressed up as Mario, (laughs) Pikachu, Donkey Kong, and I think Yoshi. And they're all dancing in this field, and one just trips the other, and they start beating the crap out of each (laughs) other. I remember that commercial. (laughs) Oh, that that commercial's so good. I should post it on the the Facebook page after we're done. But as soon as that was done and they showed clips from the game, I was just like... (laughs) Oh my god. This is going to be the greatest game ever. So, of course, I had to get it uh, the day it came out. And, you know, this has spawned one of the biggest franchises in Nintendo's history because growing up, there were two franchises that I remember playing multiplayer for Halo is one, and then Super Smash Brothers is the other. And, of course, there have been several games since then for every console. You've got Melee for the GameCube. Uh, Brawl was for the Wii, then you had Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, and now they've recently announced a new one in development. So do you think that one, uh, the new one that's coming out for the the Switch, do you think that's just going to be an updated port of the uh, the Wii U version, or do you think it's going to be an all-new Smash Brothers? I think it's going to be a brand new game, because they've had time to work on it, and you can see little teases of especially the silhouette of Link in his Breath of the Wild uh, tunic and you know he yeah. doesn't have the hat and everything so 
I would like to think that it's a new one. Now, with them saying 2018, it's obviously going to be like November or December at the absolute yeah. earliest. Oh, this is definitely I'm hoping, going to be the, the, the big holiday release for this year. And it will definitely sell some consoles for sure because everyone who has played Smash Brothers say they love it. Mm-hmm. So to explain a little bit about how the gameplay works, I mean, it's, it's a fairly straightforward game. It's you go to an arena. Uh, they're all like various theme like you have a couple of mario themes like you have the uh what's called the mushroom kingdom which is the classic you know mix of various super mario brothers one theme um they have peach's castle from mario 64 i'm just trying to name these from memory they have planet zebus from metroid saffron city from pokemon they they have a ton of them and hyrule castle from ocarina of time and it's basically you fight each other and as you hit your opponent and you deal damage, like you have this little counter that's uh, dealing with percentages. So you start with zero and your character builds up in its percentage. And the higher percentage you have, the easier it is for you to get killed. So if you're obviously at like 150 or 200, one hit's pretty much going to knock you off the, the stage and it's going to kill you. Um, let's see. Let's... Uh, developed by Hal, it was a second party developer, which also made, I think, the Kirby series. Um, it was developed uh, by Masahiro Sakurai. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that name right. He was interested in making a fighting game for four players, as he did not yet have any original ideas. His first designs were of simple base characters. Uh, first idea was to include famous Nintendo characters and put them in a fight. Knowing he would not get permission, Sakurai made a prototype of the game without sanction from Nintendo (laughs) and did not inform them until he was sure the game was well-balanced. The prototype he received or presented featured Mario, Donkey Kong, Samus, and Fox as playable characters, and Nintendo approved the idea. Wow. (laughs) I mean, it's it's really genius if you think about it because you put all these different characters fighting each other and they all have of course different abilities you know mario is a as he is in most games he's kind of a well-rounded character and a lot of them have their signature moves like mario of course can throw fireballs link has a boomerang and bombs pikachu can shoot electricity samus has her arm cannon you know it's all fairly straightforward stuff but you know i i found a copy of this game yesterday and i played it for a good majority of the afternoon and it's how do I put this it's easily the you could tell it's the first fran- the first game in the series because how is there's it playing the it game with plays the a controller l- uh i i <laughs> we, we've mentioned it several times but that controller just does not help yeah when it comes to going back and playing these old games but you know, as, as always, and I, I kind of compared this to when I talked about GoldenEye a couple of weeks ago, the controls were a little clunky to get used to, but once you do, it's just like playing it back when you were a kid. Yeah. But this game is so much fun, you know, and it has bonus stages as well um, with, you know, breaking targets and trying to jump on different platforms. So they're like little mini games that kind of break up the feel of just you know, Mario versus Link, and then you fight a team of Yoshis, and then you fight, you know, different Kirbys with different abilities. And then you do, like, a bonus stage. And this is going through what's called now classic mode, where it's basically one-player mode, where you go through and you fight each individual fighter in addition to, like I said, teams of Yoshis, team of Kirbys. And then you fight this giant floating hand at the end called Master Hand in this, like, neutral site. And... There's you start out with eight characters and you can unlock Captain Falcon, Jigglypuff, Luigi, and Ness with different objectives. And mostly it's just going through what I I, I still call it classic mode or single player mode. You know, you do um, you have to beat I think to unlock Ness you have to do it under normal difficulty with three lives or less. And there's other two, the other two, like Captain Falcon, you have to beat it in less than 20 minutes. Jigglypuff, you just go through it. And Luigi, you do the break the target mini game with all the original characters. So, you know, I, I love this franchise. It's one of my favorite franchises ever. 
just because like I've said, the the concept of it is just genius. And every game gets bigger and better, in my opinion. A lot of people still praise Melee for the GameCube as their all-time favorite. <sighs> it's been a while if I, since I've played uh, a Smash Brothers since uh, the GameCube. And I was just looking on here trying to look up the list of the current playable characters. Holy crap. I didn't realize all these players were in the game now. There's it's like jumped up quite a bit. 50, at least 50 characters. I mean, you've got the dog from Duck Hunt. you got Charizard, um, Ice Climbers, um, mm -hmm. Jigglypuff. Mr. Game & Watch. Uh, let's see. Of course, you got Mario, Luigi, Mega Man. Uh, you got a Me Brawler, a Me Gunner, Me Sword Fighter, uh, Pac Man. Um, dude, there's so many playable characters in this thing now. I'm definitely getting this for the Switch. And they've con um, they've confirmed the Inklings from Splatoon, which I recently got Splatoon two for the Switch. I went over to a friend's house yesterday and played it for like an hour and a half. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get this game. Because I played the Wii U version, and it was great. Yeah. But I'm, sh I'm sure that, you know, the there's already a long list probably of requested characters that you can find oh, on YouTube. Sure. And I didn't know I remember Bayonetta my, was a my, character now. Who? Bayonetta. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. And I remember the biggest deal when they confirmed that for brawl which was the wii version they got sonic which was you know everybody kind of thought that was gonna happen because nintendo would release these little teaser videos and they randomly put out this metal gear solid video hmm. and everybody was like what in the world is going on and then at the end they said that solid snake was gonna be in smash brothers and he was actually a really good character i, I wish they had put him in the wii u version so who knows what will happen for the Switch, but, you know, this this franchise is just great, and, you know, it received mostly positive reviews from the media and was commercially successful, selling over 5 million copies worldwide by 2001, with 2.93 million sold in the United States and 1.97 million sold in Japan. It was given an Editor's Choice Award from IGN for the best fighting game. Super Smash Bros. was commercially successful and became an N64 player's choice title, its successor, Super Smash Bros. Melee, was released for the GameCube in 2001 and spawned a series of sequels for each successive Nintendo console. So I, I think this franchise is here to stay. You know, it, it's uh, yeah. one of those, you know, when I remember the Wii U coming out, one of the first things I wanted to know is when is Smash Bros. coming out and how many characters are going to be in it? And that that's, that's a, a thing with... Every Nintendo console now, when a new one comes out, everyone wants to know about Smash Brothers. Yeah. Well, everybody's been talking about it ever since that trailer dropped, what, like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, whether or not mm -hmm. it's going to be just a port or if it's going to be a brand new game. And do you think people are going to be really disappointed if it's just an updated port of the Wii U version? Because honestly, I mean, who had the Wii U version anyway? <laughs> you know, it only That's sold true. like couple you know a couple of like how many we use were sold like nine million or something like that some crazy low number and how many of those people actually had smash brothers for the wii u so if they just did a a brand new port of it i don't think it would look bad on nintendo especially if they you know updated some of the characters maybe just kind of threw in a couple of uh new um boards or whatever um, mm -hmm. I think that would be totally fine, honestly, because I, like I said, I haven't played a Smash Brothers game since the the GameCube. I think that people will be disappointed, but in the end, people will still buy it. Everyone yeah. who has a Switch, I think, is going to end up getting it. I believe worst case scenario, if it is a port, I think they'll include maybe a couple of new characters and some new arenas yeah. and they'll update some of the characters looks like we've we've seen that link's gonna have his breath of the wild look which initially i wasn't the biggest fan of but it's actually really grown on me like i really like the blue tunic that he has yeah <laughs> but yeah I, uh, let's see 
I'd, oh, I'd be okay, you know, like I said, I haven't played it in so long. I'd be completely okay if it was just a port. Um, but, you know, I think Nintendo, if it is a port, it's like you said, they're going to put enough new stuff in there that mm-hmm. it's going to make it okay. Like Kind of like, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild was put out on the Wii U also, but it came out, but it had, you know, up, it was upgraded, looks better. On the Switch, so I don't think people would be too disappointed if it was uh, just a port. But hey, people have gotten mad over less, so <laughs> yeah, that that's why if they got upset, it would not shock me in the slightest. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as reception goes, let's see, it received mostly positive reviews, with criticism mostly directed towards the game's single player mode. Which you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's primarily a multiplayer game. So the fact that it really has any type of single player mode is, you know, I won't say it's surprising, but people aren't buying it for the single player mode. They're buying it to play with their friends. Oh, exactly. And that's what made this such a great game for the Nintendo 64s because, you know, the Nintendo 64 already had four ports in the console itself. So it was already a a party console. And now with the, the Nintendo Switch... And I've played a, a good bit of uh, Mario Kart online. The, I find that the game matching and everything to be pretty smooth. So, you mm-hmm. know, I think, you know, with the online play, I think it'll be just fine. Yeah, Although I'm, Nintendo does need to make it easier to add friends to your friends list. But we'll, we'll work on that, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. As far as review scores, uh, GameSpot gave it a 7.5 out of 10. IGN, 8.5 out of 10. Nintendo Power, 7.7 out of 10. I feel like their Nintendo Power would kind of be a little harsh on their like <laughs> their main IPs, unless it was Ocarina of Time, which they would, you know, praise, you know, to no end. Yeah. It's like, oh, the, you know... These other websites will give it a nine. Oh, we're going to give it a six and a half. Yeah. You could have done better. <laughs> we don't want to make it look too good. Yeah. But as far as this <clears throat> game goes, um, I would give it a solid eight. And obviously, the franchise has improved as far as gameplay, graphics, um, items, characters, all that stuff. But, you know, it had to start somewhere. And I think this was the great starting point to to me what is like a top three or top four driving franchise for nintendo because really you've got your mario you've got your zelda i would honestly put smash brothers up there because like i said so many people look forward to the new smash brothers game every time that a new console comes out yeah everyone wants to know when is smash brothers coming out um, so what did you pick up yours for? <clears throat> How much did you get your cart for? Oh, the 64 version? Yeah. Oh, I found it at um, this... Pl- uh, I think I men- might have mentioned their name. Uh, what was it? Video Game Trading Post. And I got it... Because um, the cool thing about them is all their games are in great condition. They individually wrap all of them, which I think is awesome. Yeah. I got mine for uh, 25 Oh, that's not bad. That's yeah. That's about the um, average I'm seeing here on eBay. It's about twenty five bucks for the Nintendo sixty four, and it was in really good condition. So I, I thought it was well worth it. And that's the thing. Now is the time to start collecting for the Nintendo sixty four before these carts start skyrocketing. Because you know the the kids that. You know, we're are gonna have the nostalgia for the N sixty four are gonna be, you know, in their twenties and thirties coming up soon and you know, they're gonna start driving the price of this stuff up because they're gonna want to get their hands on the Nintendo sixty four. It's still a popular console in the uh, the retro stores. So, you know, they sell a lot during the holidays and everything like that. So if you have a, a and Nintendo 64, or you're interested in getting a, a collection for the Nintendo 64, I say now's the time to get in before you're in my position with the uh, you know the regular Nintendo, where I, I'm not gonna pay 50, 60 bucks for Legend of Zelda. Sorry, I'm not gonna do it. There was 15 million of those carts floating around in the in the the public 
And why do I have to pay 50 bucks for uh, Legend of Zelda? It's stupid. Exactly. But yeah, that's um, that's my review of Super Smash Brothers. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite gaming franchises. Maybe we have to play a couple of games when I come over to your place next weekend. <laughs> Which, speaking of that, yes, uh, this this Saturday we'll be doing. Uh, Jason and myself will be part of the survey panel. That will be an episode of my other show, The Derek Diamond Experience, which will be on Facebook Live this upcoming Saturday, March 31st at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. It'll be us two, uh, Steve Wise, the director of the film, and several cast and crew members talking about our our fun time filming in the Florida heat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's have a movie where we wear, we wear five layers of leather. And uh, let, when are we going to do it? July. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man. But, uh, uh, it it was a lot of fun though. Like we'll we'll knock the weather, but honestly, that was it was a really fun time. And you know, we had a great crew and everything. And it's going to be fun. You know, reliving that whole experience. You've had some pretty good episodes lately, so everybody go over and uh, subscribe to the Derek Diamond Experience on whatever pod uh, podcast um, app you listen to and subscribe to his show because they're all very, very good. Well, I will say this. Um, this past week, I kind of did an impromptu Facebook Live AMA, and due to, kind of, I think, the spontaneity of it, I didn't really have anybody ask questions, so I had to carry I know. <laughs> a forty a forty minute podcast by myself. But I was able to do it, and I had never done that before. I know because like I had said, done it said oh, AMA ahead. on the 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 description, and I listened to the whole episode. And I was like, nobody asked any <laughs> questions. It's not an AMA if no one asks a question, Derek. <laughs> that was how it was advertised. Yeah. <laughs> But it was, but a it good was episode, still fun, though. you know. Well, I, I appreciate that. You know, it was mostly just me talking about like stuff I have coming up over the next couple of months, finally finishing my movie script and various things like that. So if you want to hear me talk about myself for 40 <laughs> minutes, you can check out this <laughs> this past week's show. But yeah, we we've got some some fun episodes coming up uh, over the next few weeks, so uh, I'm excited for the survey panel. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So everybody should check that out this Saturday. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at D Diamond Podcast. Um, and also for the pop culture palette, just this last week we released our monthly Patreon exclusive episode where me and Stephanie and Wally played a game show called Do You Know the 90s? And it was uh, 1990s general trivia. And, um, I think, yeah, Wally, uh, if you, I don't, I'm trying to remember, uh, like, cause we, Stephanie's the reigning champion. <laughs> like nobody has beaten Stephanie. Um, so it, it's always comes down to me and Wally on who knows more of whatever the, whenever she's the host. So if you want to find out who wins and who knows more about the nineties, you're going to have to pay us. For that episode it's at least just a dollar a month get you access to those shows uh and you can go to patreon.com slash pop culture palette and um <coughs> excuse me you get all the regular episodes for free uh just if you go wherever you download your podcast at go to pop culture palette subscribe to the show at pcp show on twitter and pcpradio.com is our website um, other than that, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Unless you got anything you want to talk about before we go. No, I think that does it for me. Awesome. Oh, sorry. I had to, I had to hit the cough switch there for a second. Uh, let me go ahead and play our music here. Um, that's not what I want to play. Where is our <laughs> ending music? Oh, come on now. Uh, all right, this soundboard is really starting to aggravate me now. Uh, let me go ahead and play this. There we go. Uh, if you would like to email us, you can email us at nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. We're on nerdcaveretro.com. We're on Instagram and Twitter at nerdcaveretro, at jfantastic, at Derek underscore diamond, and at, uh, we're on Facebook at nerdcaveretro. So Derek, please tell them what it's all about. 
May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Yes. Where's our outro? It won't play. To a Nerd Cave Network <laughs> I don't get what's going on with this stupid thing. Also, uh, before we go, real quick, I also want to say that we did have some listener emails. Uh, I did not have time to um, get them ready to go for the show tonight, but I will next week. So hang on to your shorts. They will be uh, on the show next week. So uh, we will nice. see you next week right here on the, uh, the Nerd Cave Retro Show. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. All right, and uh, for everybody on Twitch, thank you, and we will see you next week. Bye.